for those of you who feel a little uncomfortable about wiring a series circuit, let me show you that you've actually done it for most of your life. Behold the noble flashlight. So here we need to power this three volt bulb, but batteries only come in one and a half volts. So how do we do this? Well, through the magic of electrical engineering, we've learned that if you stick two one and a half volt batteries together in series, which means the positive end of one touches the flat end or the negative end of the other, and you've created a three volt power source. If you connect two power sources together in series, the voltages are additive. And that's what you do when you stick these into the flashlight. And behold, it works. I've just done some series wiring. Now we are going to do it with some half volt solar cells. We have three solar cells here. I'll start with two and wire them in series and then hook them up to our load, the motor. So in series wire we have a positive and a negative coming off the cells and we'll put those together just like the flat and pointy end of the battery. So I put the two wires together and cinch that with this alligator clip and then one end is going to go to one side of the motor and the other, the negative to the other side of the motor. Voila, and voila, connections made, just need to put them under the light so they get their energy. Now the electricity goes through both of these cells in this circuit and then to the motor. And you can see that the motor spins faster now that it's got twice as much voltage coming into it. Let's see what happens if we add a third solar cell in series and increase the voltage by one more half of a volt. And we've got positive and negative. We'll do another positive from this cell to the negative of the next solar cell. Put on the, the pincher clip, making a good connection from metal to metal. And then on the last cell here, the last positive, the one that's left hanging out, we add the motor, the motor's wire. And we'll see if we can get this going under this light here. This motor is really flying. What happens if one of our sources is no longer in the light and so it's no longer producing a flow of electrons. Let's take a look. Pull one out from under the light, and behold, the whole circuit stops working. Same thing would happen on this side too. We have a slight electrical challenge here for you and your students. That is how to power a radio that needs six volts of electricity with half volt solar electric cells. And the answer is quite straightforward. We use series wiring. So we've taken 12 half volt cells and wired them in series to produce six volts. And we're in the sunshine, so we've got plenty of fuel. Let's see what happens. There we go. Now it's a series circuit. Watch what happens. Watch what happens if I cover part of the series. I can stop it by just covering over a cell. So in series wiring, our goal was to increase the force of the electricity. In parallel wiring, what we're going to try to change instead is the volume of electricity. How many electrons are actually flowing through the circuit? Um, what determines how many electrons flow is the size of the cell. The more surface area, the more light that hits the solar cell, the more electrons that get energized that then flow through our circuit. So if we want to increase the volume of electrons, we need to basically create more surface area by putting two together in parallel. In series wiring, you remember we put the positive of one to the negative of the other. In parallel wiring, we're actually going to be putting the positives together from each cell and the negatives together from each cell. So here are the positives that we're going to hook together and here are the negatives. And then we'll take these to the circuit that we want to power. So let's do that. We're going to use the jumpers to build us parallel circuit. So we take the two wires off the positive and we connect them like this. We take another jumper, we take the two negatives and we connect them like this. That's a good connection. And now we hook them up to our load. So one jumper goes to one of the terminals, one of the bare wires off the motor. The other goes to the next. Hold our motor in the air and we provide some light. And there we go. See our propeller spinning? Now if you listen to it, it's not spinning very fast. It's only spinning with the force of what one cell's voltage would produce because the voltage has stayed the same. Now watch what would happen if we take one of the cells out from under the light. See how it didn't affect the spinning motor. 
And that's because there are parallel paths. In series, the electricity had to go through each source before it went to the motor. So if you stopped one, the whole thing stopped. With parallel, there's two pathways. Another, another toy that we have in our solar cell set is the Sun Dancer. And this Sun Dancer can do two things. One, it can use solar electricity to spin this wheel. And the other thing is that it can make solar powered music. We're going to demonstrate the motor that spins the wheel. So all you need to do is take one of your trusty solar cells, connect the negative wire to the negative lead from the Sun Dancer, connect the positive wire from the Sun Dancer to the positive wire coming out of the solar cell, add some light, and let's see what happens. Well, what do you know it works with the light generated by this light bulb? Well, let's see what direction is it? It looks like it's going this way. What happens if we reverse polarity? I don't know. Why don't we find out? So just go like so. Black on red, red on black. Let's now go in the other direction. You can add a second solar cell and practice your series wiring. Will this thing go faster? Or what, what will it do if I put another cell in series, if I increase the voltage? So we remove it from the light. You connect positive to negative. You hook it up again and you give it some of that nice light and let it rip. Because we have this Sun Dancer running on an indoor lamp, we can play with the amount of light that hits it and see its effect on the speed with which the Sun Dancer spins. All I have to do is pull this back, taper it back a little bit, and you can see and hear that it's spinning more slowly. This is a good example of the photovoltaic effect. In this case, we're reducing the amount of light that's hitting the solar cells, and that means less current is flowing, which means that the solar dancer is going to move more slowly. Um, a way that we really like to end workshops with teachers and with students is to have them build one solar-powered circuit together. We use a module like this, this 3-volt, three 3-watt three module, and we use the motors with fan blades on them. And what we do is we start with one person holding the solar module, then we invite somebody, like say, say we might say, now it's time for Susie to enter the circuit. And she comes over and she undoes one connection in the circuit and uses the terminals from the two sides of the motor to complete the circuit. So it will then become a series circuit. Series in the sense that there's two loads in series being powered by one solar module. So electricity is coming out here, going through the motor, then going down the other wire, going up and through the other motor, and into this solar module here. And then we continue to invite more and more people in, each person with a motor. As you add more motors, the motors will start to slow down. So what do you do when the motors stop working? Well, you say you ask the students, well, what should we do now? And they'll come up with an idea like, hey, no, we can add another solar panel in series. And so you do. It's important that you add it in series. And so to add in series, you hook the red wire coming off of one of these solar modules to the black wire off the other, like this, and you can continue on. And then if you reach another point where the motor slowed down, you can add yet another solar panel until you got the whole classroom going. And it's just really a nice way to know that each person's connection has to be there in order for the circuit to work. It just creates a really nice feeling of unity. So that's the end of our tutorial on the solar cell set. Let's all hope that we get to see more and more of this technology being integrated into our society so that we can have a more sustainable energy future. Goodbye for now. Thank you.